Okay, we're reconvening uh, Wicomica County Council uh, budget work session for May 11th, 2020. Um, the next item on the agenda, and I, I should note ahead of time that uh, we have, um, we do have a quorum of the council here. We have Councilman Holloway, uh, Councilman Hastings, uh, Councilman McCain, uh, Vice President Cannon, and uh, Councilwoman Nicole Ackley. And that's, um, that is the total. Five total. Public works is the next item on the agenda. I believe we have Mr. Uh, Whitelock here. Is that correct? Just give him a second to unmute. Mm -hmm. Need to unmute if you're there. Can you hear me now? There we go. There you go. There we go. How are you? Mr. Um, Mr. Whitelock, if you could just make sure that you're speaking into the audio on your end. How about now? Can you hear me? Good, thank you. Right. Mr. Whitelock, I understand you're in the building. If you'd like to join us in the council chambers, you're certainly welcome to do so. We have social distancing here. It's uh, your, it's your, you're a choice. We'll, we'll, we'll stay right here. All right. Council questions. Uh, Mr. Whitelock. Mr. Whitelock. Yes. yes. Um, one thing I noticed is you're uh, asking for an increase in the tipping fees. Yes. yes. And the um, the permitting fee for a landfill. Uh, yes. Is there a reason for that? And I'll ask that first. I'll ask that question first. I guess. It, it, it's for a six hundred thousand dollar operating increase due to hauling activities from uh, Conway Mill. Do what now? It's costing us an extra six hundred thousand dollars a year to, to haul uh, dirt from Conway Mill to the land. From Conley Mill. The donated property. Uh huh. So you're hauling dirt from there now? Yeah. yeah. We, well, we were. We pulled back a little bit. We pulled back. Uh huh. Have you checked with um, any other uh, counties to see what their tipping fees are? Are we in line with other other folks? Or actually, we're one of the two lowest uh, in the lower end. Sure. Uh huh. As um. Everyone else down there runs from 6250 up to. It's what now? I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear that. So it, 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 here, you can go anywhere from 6250 up to $80 a ton up in Sussex County. Uh huh. Okay. Any, any other questions? I might come back. We've noticed uh, on the. Uh, <clears throat> On the line items that uh, you've uh, budgeted for a chief civil engineer, just curious as to um, what uh, what was behind that. Um, the thought was on that that we wanted to uh, reintroduce that back in, and the extra engineer was. So what we try to do is hold a 30-day response time window for our stormwater stuff, and that part of that is to help bring that in. Okay. I guess a question related to that. Are you up to staff right now with uh, with your employees there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there any concern? Is there any concerns if you um, up the tipping fee that you could possibly lose um, some of the um, carters that would be bringing um, items to the landfill? No. no. There's no concerns on that? Okay. No, we would be more in line with the county and around the Sunday way. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I, be, I believe we get out of county waste in county now because of. Um, the 600000 for hauling the dirt from, from Connolly Mill to uh, the landfill. That couldn't have been absorbed in all in your tipping fees that you already in the in the money you already had, or is that no, just no, an no, addition? 
Well, generally, we, we try to hold it and roll back into the bank account from three to four hundred thousand dollars a year. Basically, if I kept running the way I am, I would be running in the way. Okay. All right. Uh, I see there's like a million dollar reduction in road spending. Is that going to have any effect on our paving program? No, no, no. no. Generally, by the end of the pavement period, we, we generally turn some money back into the general fund. So we can take a million dollars out of our roads program and it's not going to have an effect on any of our paving? How, yeah, how, how do, I don't understand how that works. So, so when we get that, we get, we get a, a basically a lump sum of money between car and chip, slurry seal, and paving. Uh, we just distribute it out as we need. If we're, if we're going to do more paving and we you know, we, we cast more money that way or, or some of the other. We're not We're doing not as doing much of the secondary stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, it's Hi, Nicole Ackley. How are you? Yeah. Good. Good. Um, I know I, I emailed you these questions. questions. I just, I just wanted, wanted to... to uh, go over them again so that all the council members could hear and the citizens could hear the response. Uh, the question that I asked you of if funds been allocated to Barron Creek Road. Barron Creek Road uh, holds some $500,000 in funding right now. Okay. Um, we just, just got the approval from DNR and Army Corps to put the road back in place. Great. The estimated cost for that project is going to be about $1.1 million. So, so the county would need to come up with the other. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there any, is there any plans for that? Uh, we haven't put anything in because uh, the budget has already been submitted. Okay. And we have yet to approve. I see. Okay. Um, and then the other one was the West Westdale um, Ditch Reconstruction Grant Fund. Yeah. Uh, There's a hundred thousand dollars in the CIP this year for that work. Okay. okay. So that'll so be done, done this year. year. If you approve the CIP. Yeah. <laughs> All, right, All right. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks. Mr. Whitelock, are you suggesting that the council should make a recommendation that the funds be um, uh, allocated uh, for uh, Barron Creek? That is what is needed, but I wouldn't want to speak for you exactly that often. And that will be right around the price tag to, to do the work with us. And um, I guess, I, I'm assuming that you're anticipating that work will be done in this coming fiscal year? Whatever the time schedule or county schedule is appropriate. Was it something that you initially put in your budget that was cut from the executive's office? No. no. So you didn't, you didn't put it in your budget originally? No, I, I, when I say we just got approval, we just got approval. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Do you have any comments you'd like to make? No, no, thank you. Thank you. All right, great. Thanks for, thanks for being here. We appreciate it. You have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is the, uh, the airport. How's everybody? Good Great. Morning, if you could do us a favor and just introduce yourselves. Uh, uh, Mr. Kramer, I, I hate to say you have to share a mic over there, but um, if you could just let us know who you are and your role, we'd appreciate it. I'm, my name is Matt Kramer. I'm a vice chairman of the airport commission. Calvin Peacock, chair of the airport commission. Tony Rudy, assistant airport manager. Great, thank you very much for being here, gentlemen. We appreciate it. Um, Mr. Peacock, I wanna thank you also for the forum on the waterline, uh, very well thought out. I know that was your, your personal initiative and uh, the council would like to thank you very much for, for taking that initiative. I thought it was very productive. Uh, thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the council for their participation in passing uh, those two resolutions as well. Great, glad to help you. <laughs> um, I will let, uh, Tony, I'll let you go first if you'd like to, uh, somewhat to maybe explain any new initiatives on your part. Um, 
You can also touch on any of the, uh, the um, anticipated funding that you, that you think might be coming down the line. A lot of what we're looking at, I guess, this year um, depends not only on what the, the county might decide to do, but also we do have to take into consideration what uh, we're assuming is coming from the federal government as well and how that will impact us. Yes. Okay? Okay. So uh, and you have to get very close to your mic, gentlemen, because the, the, it's very muffled with the, uh, yeah. Okay, I guess I'd like to begin with, um, you know, we took a good look at this budget again um, uh, at the executive's request about a uh, month and a half ago um, and really um, tried to make it pretty flat um, to last year's budget. Um, we do have some increased expenses, um, uh, maintenance expenses um, that we've recognized, uh, so we bumped those items up slightly. Um, however, we did, uh, we did reduce back other items uh, as well just to, uh, to try to stay with a flat budget. Um, with that being said, um, with the CARES funding uh, that has come out, the airport was awarded, or I should say not awarded, but um, was slated uh, to receive approximately $18 million. Um, under recommendations from the FAA, um, we are looking to use uh, part of those funds, roughly um, uh, $10, $10 million of those funds towards operating expenses. Um, we can go back up to January 20th of this year to get reimbursed for operating and maintenance expenses. And we've projected uh, the number for the next few years um, basically to cover, uh, cover operating and, and maintenance expenses um, for the next three years um, with roughly a 4% increase year over year. And then the last year, um, we reduced that um, number to help fund uh, projects that we're looking at getting funded. So we've got about roughly $8 million, as you'll see on those sheets, um, towards projects uh, uh, that we need for the airport, uh, for capital projects. Okay. And Tony, I believe, don't you have like five years to spend this? You don't have to spend all this. Four, in... uh, excuse, four years from when the, when the grant is issued. Four years from the grant. Uh, Tony, I, I see on, uh, let's see, revenue generating projects. Okay, that answers my question. Never mind. <laughs> I've seen the 150,000 for the auto parking attendant. Is that what you're expecting in revenue for 21? Uh, that, well, that's an expense for equipment that um, um, basically we buy that equipment up front. Pardon Our, me? We, bu we, buy, uh, we buy that equipment for roughly $150,000. And um, our parking concession is up uh, next year. So that equipment would basically replace uh, the concession operation at the airport. So, so we buy that equipment? We buy that, and it'll pay for itself in, in okay. less than two years. Now, does that mean we're going to be hiring people to run it, or are we going to sign another agreement with, with the parking uh, um, management? As far as I know, no, we're not. We will have to maintain that equipment, though. And... Um, uh, I'm not familiar with uh, as, as far as that's something that we can do or if we would have to uh, uh, contract the maintenance of that equipment out. But it's, it's, um, uh, it's basically a, a license plate reader from what I understand. So, okay. so it should I'm, be very minimal I think I'm off on the wrong track. Um, this isn't to do with the, with the um, Republic parking lot. Yes, this, this equipment will basically replace uh, that concession agreement. So we won't have people in a booth. It'll be an automated system. Okay. All right. So you're going to do away with the booth and the people and just put an auto tag reader? Yes. And that's how they'll be charged? Yes. Okay. Didn't know that was going to happen. Okay. All right. Any other questions from anyone? Um, I don't think I have a lot of questions here. Um, Mr. Uh, Strasburg, how, how do you anticipate um, when this, these funds come in, how will that be handled? Uh, I, I believe it's, am I not, am I, how will that be handled through the county? I still have to get guidance from the, uh, from the FAA, John. Um, the, uh, as I recall, Tony, 
uh, are these reimbursable grants or is this just straight grant funding that comes in? Uh, from my understanding, the operations and maintenance expenses are reimbursable, so we would have to um, submit um, uh, those requests to the FAA to get reimbursed. Um, similar, I, I believe it's similar to how we do for capital projects right now. Um, for the for the development projects, um, we don't have guidance yet as to uh, as to how that um, how that's going to be funded. But again, we would have to apply for those projects be awarded a grant and I'm assuming it would be a similar situation where um, as as we have payment requests into the FAA we would be, get reimbursed at that point okay from an appropriation standpoint John I think that's your question uh, yeah. it would still run through the same process so the so the appropriation would still come through council so the projects uh, for instance that we're proposing doing would still have to be approved by council Okay. All right. The um, thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm good. I forgot what I was going to ask. Sorry. Go ahead. No, I was. I was going to say I'm glad to see you know a lot of strong revenue numbers here, which is really good, yeah. and I'm, I'm glad to see that. And you know, if you look back on prior years, uh, I think the airport's done an excellent job in 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 uh, in making uh, in in seeing growth over the last couple of years anyway. So that's, that's an excellent thing. The, um, we've had two vendors come forward wanting concessions. Do you anticipate any more of the, any, any other revenue generating streams out there that um, they're going to come forward and want concessions on? Uh, no, I haven't heard of any uh, to this point. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions or comments that you would, uh, other gentlemen would like to make? Okay. All right. Thank you very much for coming in. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Mrs. Hurley, what do we have as far as the... Uh, um, so our next one is not scheduled until 1230. 1230. So we're we are going to be taking a recess then. Yes. That Obviously. one already happened, didn't it? Public Works? No, uh, the last one is Fire fire Department. Right. And the, they did get rescheduled to 1230. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, if you can move them up any closer, can you can you call them back? And I, I can try. Yes. Let's see if we can't get them in here 12 o'clock at the latest. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yes. I can try to help them. Um, they both work, I think, on the road. So I will try. I will definitely try to call him. There's two people or Nate, so I'll let you guys know. They can come early. Thank Thanks, you, Lynn. Lynn. Okay. It's one three zero one seven one five eight five nine two. It's it's written on your agenda. Okay, uh, we're now we'll go into recess. Um, what's our t well, forty-five minutes at the at the uh, at the least. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we're reconvening uh, for the uh, May eleventh, two thousand twenty, Conoco County work session. The uh, final item on the agenda is uh, with the uh, with the uh, volunteer fire and ambulance, and I know we have two gentlemen here. I think it's Chief Billy White and, and John Hilton. Am I correct? Correct. Yes, correct. Great, gentlemen. Thanks for thanks for being here. We appreciate thanks for it. Thank you for having me. Uh, we haven't had the opportunity to talk much with you about any of this. Uh, we noticed there are increases. I think the majority of council. Uh, is is uh is okay with that um i think you guys for what the volunteers do for us countywide um i know i've always said we can't pay enough <laughs> not all the taxpayers might say that but we're really grateful for everything you do for the wakamaku county um we thought we'd just ask you just as as uh, an overview since we haven't had the opportunity of the conversation um what you saw as your needs this year and um and the reasons as far as um um, the reasons that we, we needed to make a, a, 
consider higher, more payments. And whoever wants to, whoever wants to step in, feel free. John, well, I'm going I to go. Oh, uh, you heard uh, first, Billy. That's fine. That's thank you. Thank you. Um, again, thank you all for have take, making the opportunity to speak with us. Um, we asked for these increases, as most of you are aware, and I believe you just said that yourself. Um, you know, what we do costs a significant amount of money every year. And uh, we appreciate the support we've gotten from you in the past and look forward to the support we'll get from you in the future. But the cost of equipment, the maintenance and so forth of the equipment and the protective equipment we use has increased significantly over the past year. Um, I've been involved in the fire service for over 30 years now and have seen the increases and it's just continually going up. Um, the paramedic salaries, uh, as John will probably tell you, and as most of you are aware of, we're competing with not just a Wicomico County for now, it's an Eastern Shore and a state of Maryland. Uh, several of our paramedics not only work in Sharptown or Wicomico County, they also work across the bridge um, and other counties as well. And we're competing, trying to maintain and keep those folks here with us. And the demand for the paramedics is a lot higher than what the supply might be. And, um, you know, we have good paramedics that work for us in the county, but trying to uh, retain them is getting harder and harder. So that's why we ask for the increases due to the, the cost of doing business. And also, as I said, for the, to try to keep the paramedics here um, with us. And that's all, John. Um, just to uh, you know, what Billy was saying about the cost of the increases, um, pal, but we just had you purchase the new uh, breathing apparatus this year. Uh, just to replace, not to increase the amount of units we have, just to re replace what we had, it cost a hundred thousand dollars. Could you repeat um, that? You, you were breaking good for 20 years. Could you repeat that? Because you were breaking. You were you were breaking up. If you could repeat that, thank you. Sorry. The, the new air packs cost 189,000, and they're only good for 15 to 20 years, and they're going to go up again when, when it's time to replace them next time. And that was just to get what we have, not to buy any extra packs to have on hand. It was just what we needed on the truck. Um, and as Chief White was saying about the paramedics, we're competing greatly with the cross the bridge for pay. They're paying more, so our paramedics are leaving the shore, working a 24-hour shift across the bridge for more money. We can't, with, with what we do in fundraisers, which is drastically decreased over the years because nobody wants to support the fire sources no more. Our fundraisers aren't there like they used to be. And that's part of the reason we're asking for a little more help from the county to keep the trucks running and providing the services to the community like they deserve. Uh, understood. Thank you. Joe? Yeah, if I may say something else as well, this is Billy White again. The cost for the paramedics, it was brought to our attention by several departments in the county. There, I mean, the average contribution across the county, minimum-wise, is about $50,000 a year to offset the funding that we get from the county and our union. That's billing um, to pay salaries. There are some companies in the county for their ALS, uh, or their PMS, I should say, is paying upwards of two hundred fifty dollars to $300,000 out of their own money to help keep this up and operating to a level that we're just providing the service. And I believe when we met with you folks last year, um, the conversation was that this is just a band. -aid. You know, there needs to be something looked into, and we've done some work on our own to try to figure out ways to make this a more um, permanent uh, situation as far as the EMS goes in the county. But it's going to be a significant cost to the taxpayer um, if that, those avenues are pursued in the future. 
Um, and as far as fire equipment goes, as John said, uh, one of the neighboring companies over there on the west side, they just bought new breathing apparatus to meet the current standard. Um, and it was a one for one. They didn't buy any extra. And their cost was over 325000 And that's just one example. We had to replace 10 sets of turnout here this year because we have them on a rotation. And those 10 sets of turnout here cost $50,000. Uh, so, I mean, those are just some examples of some of the things that are going on. I know you mentioned stuff, but I just wanted to, you know, enlighten you again on the fact that we're out here trying to have fundraisers and to offset what we do get here. Um, I, I just worked with John trying to get some information. Um, fire companies to date so far have lost fundraising because of the virus over a half a million dollars. Uh, we turned that information into the State Farmers Association. We've also talked to um, the county executives or to something there. But we've lost over half a million dollars since March the 1st um, through fundraising for our fundraising. One of the biggest ones hit so far has been Hebron uh, with that because they've had to cancel that carnival. And Sharptown, we're not sure what we're going to do yet. We're still um, in a wait and see mode. Well, why is it that Hebron didn't even, they didn't even do their casino night this year? Or this, you know, they, they normally do that. Uh, Hebron usually does their casino night. I've been going to that for the last six, 16 years or so uh, every year. And they usually yeah, had it the Sunday, a Super Bowl Sunday. And I know that was pushed off and a couple others were too. I'm curious on a side note, just why some of that fundraising was not happening or why those events weren't happening. But um, I, I can't answer that question as to why they didn't have it. Uh, Someone else might be able to speak to them. Just curious. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Joe. White. Mr. White. Mr. White. Yes. Yes. This is the cool app. How are you? I'm, 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 how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I know he's a little bit about yeah. This, this, but, um, but um, just, just, I'm just, I'm just wondering, wondering what, what the, uh, uh, what the billing residual, residual is on your paramedics, because, because with the expensive the paramedics, paramedics, the reimbursement has also gone up drastically. drastically. And, and so, so I'm wondering with the rural health healthcare offset, offset, if, if all, all fire, fire departments, departments and, and I looked at this the county, like, all through the county, with the fire department, with corrections, with, um, uh, there was one other one I was looking at. They would combine their billing services to make a consortium in the nursing home. They could increase the reimbursements. They could, but, but I mean, you're still only going to get a certain percentage of the billing. Uh, I'll use Shark Town for an example. Uh, I believe last year we ran 200, I believe, ambulance calls, and you're still only going to get a percentage of what you bill. Um, we don't do collections. Um, that was something we decided when we went to the building that we were not going to do collections because of the rural area and the, uh, uh, the income of the folks in the area. I don't want to, you know, say anything. That, but that's why we, we opted not to go with a collection type billing system. Now, I don't know what other departments do, but uh, I know, you know, of course, Salisbury, Heaven, those down bar and parcels for fruit, their, their billing is probably going to be significantly more than what ours is, of course, because they run more calls. But I, I don't know as far as going together. I mean, it might be something to look at in the future. Um, it might help, but... Um, would, would you mind, do you have a, do you have like a billing printout out of what you bill and then what you... What your return is? I can get that. Yes, I don't have a ton of them. Okay. Would you Would you mind getting it for me? I just want to take a look at it and um, mm -hmm. see what it's like compared to even like the nursing home if they're getting what they bill. Okay. Yeah, we can look into it. And of course, there's some of them that we, no matter you know, the billing is preset what we're going to get from Medicare, Medicaid. And I, don't quote me on this. I think it's only a hundred or a hundred, hundred and ten dollars, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's already predetermined. And of course, there's also, from my understanding, um, that there's talks of that possibly changing, where we'll get actually less because of, or for that. Okay. Okay. But I'll, I'll be more than happy to get you a copy of that. 
I mean, is, is that something you'd be interested in? I just, I, I just see I, that overall with the county, something that we could bring together as more bargaining power for a higher reimbursement rate. I, I can't say if you'll put me together some information between the county association and the chiefs association, we'll be more than happy to discuss it with them to okay. see what the fire companies may want to do. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Joe. Thank you. How y'all doing today? Yeah. yeah. I'm good, good sir. Good, good. good. Um, uh, my question was going to be, um, what effects has the COVID-19 situation had on the fundraising? But I see you kind of already addressed that. Um, so I guess I don't have that question anymore. But uh, you said you think they've lost about a half a million dollars in fundraising um, monies already. Um, is there any um, yeah, yeah. outlook on about what that will total out to by the end of the year or, say, the end of the summer? Well, based on the uh, information my, we've gotten gotten so far um, from all the fire companies, we're right at five hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars as of right now, and that runs through July first. Um, based on the way things are right now, um, if it continues on through the end of the summer, we're looking we're looking at maybe September the first or October the first. We're projecting that'll probably double, um, based on the fact if Shark Town, if we lose our carnival. Um, Pittsville, Bingo's, um, I know Powellville's got some other, all the fire companies have some other events that are potentially going to be canceled um, if we continue on the way we are with the shutdown. So we're looking at probably over a million dollars, if not more. Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, pretty, that's a pretty big hit. It really is. It really is. Um, I don't have any yeah, other yeah, questions. Yeah. I don't, a, I don't have any other questions. Well. Um, I don't have any Ray, other talking about the fund I've lost them again. Great while you're talking about the fundraising, something else that was brought to our attention when we were making these phone calls about the fundraising. All the fire companies had stated that their EMS billing, their EMS calls are down and that they've seen a significant decrease in their EMS billing because of that. You should be seeing a decrease in you should be seeing a decrease in that probably and traffic accident calls also because people aren't driving as much. Is that is that come across your desk? Have you paid attention to that? <coughs> yeah, calls yeah. as a general, far and EMS calls from all the chiefs that I've, I've spoke to all of them have decreased, um, except for probably the city, I would say. But um, I know the county departments, they've all decreased. Uh, and the biggest thing that when I was talking to them last week was, like I said, not only the fundraising, but the EMS billing where it's all significantly across the county. Has the departments had to purchase any special equipment for this COVID-19 situation? Um, or did you probably have all that already? No, we had, um, we had some to start with. Um, a lot of it was left over from the bowl eye situation a few years ago. But um, most of the departments I've spoke to uh, had spent on the on the average. Now, some had spent more of the busier departments around the court. But on the average, they spent at least $1,000 so far. Um, the Chiefs Association and the County Association have gone together with the funds that we have. And we have purchased some additional gowns. And we're looking at trying, we're trying to find masks and john and, and the county association are working on face shields and so forth and we are also in the process of trying to get a grant um, i got a meeting later on this afternoon in regards to filling out some grant information so we can the county departments can attempt to get a grant uh, what we've gotten through the state as far as ppe has been and i don't want to step on anybody's toes but it's a bad habit i have but it's been very insignificant um we've been out trying to work together to find ppe and like i said on the average to answer your question the, we spent at least a thousand dollars if not more and the worst part about the ppe we're getting is disposal there's we're not we're just it, it one time and done with the majority of it so we're spending that much we're constantly having to buy more do you think uh, 
do you think that you're going to have any luck with representation on the state or even the federal level to try to to see if you can't um, acquire some type of funding similar to like you know from the CARES Act? We've been told the um, I talked to um, Mr. Strasburg last week or the week before in regards to that, and he was looking into it, and they were trying to get some guide, guidance from the state in regards to the CARES Act. I know other counties around us have been able to get some funding or reimbursement um, from the CARES Act in regards to PPE and other things they've had to do special because of this. Right, um, and this wouldn't even be really for PPE. This would just be from you know lost revenue due to the fact right. that, as you suggested, so many of your volunteer um, 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 fundraisers have had to be canceled. Uh, I would hope. Are, are you in that perspective, I, I, possibly. Yes. Yes. As well, um, that was one of the other things we spoke to, Mr. I must say, I think he's, uh, he's very much on top of it. I know he's been uh, communicating with the governor's office on a weekly basis. So, um, I mean, it, it is in good hands to see, you know, see how, how it plays out from here. Any other questions from anyone? Yeah, I'm Joe. good, and uh, thank you all for what you do, and tell your ladies auxiliaries thank you. I know here on the east side that they're all working hard, and I'm sure you guys and girls are too on the west side. It's yeah, we are. We're, we're working together. It's nice to see we're trying to get through this together. So We appreciate you taking the time to, to call in. Thank you very much. No problem. All right. Any support you can give us would be great, 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 great. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a good. Thank you. We appreciate everything you do. Have a good week. Thank you. Thank you. You, you too. too. Thank you. I'm taking a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Favor. Meetings adjourned. I have four votes to adjourn.